Oops. <laughs> well done. <laughs>
what I found out about it. Blending that out was a little bit of an effort, but it might have been because I left it sitting there for like five minutes while I was looking up the details. So, so the finish so far seems pretty matte and it's kind of a low medium coverage. Like you can still see all my freckles coming through. My texture doesn't seem emphasized, but my pores don't look really like smoothed over or anything. Okay, so it says that it's supposed to last up to 24 hours. Ultra creamy, buildable coverage, shine free base. Okay, so matte. You can use it as a foundation or a concealer or a highlight and contour stick. So in that case, I'm gonna try building the coverage a little bit. Let's see how much coverage this can give me. Uh, not a lot. <laughs> that added like a slight bit more coverage, but you can still see my freckles coming through. I don't mind the finish, but the coverage isn't really there. Not what they claim anyway. I just feel like my skin looks a bit dull. You know what I mean? If I was to use this again, I'd have to put like an illuminating primer or a brightening primer underneath. I'm gonna just quickly do the rest of my face. Okay, so the foundation blended out quite nicely. I don't particularly like it on my skin though, I'm not gonna lie. It's just a bit lackluster. So let's move on to concealer. I've got another L'Oreal product and this is the L'Oreal Infallible More Than Concealer. I have the shade 320 Porcelain, which I believe is the lighter shade. When I went to go get this, I was actually pleasantly surprised with the shade range. They go pretty light and I believe they went pretty deep. So this is going to be a little bit bright <laughs> today, but we're going to try it anyway. Very big concealer wand. What does that remind you of? <laughs> Everyone is copying shape tape with concealers these days. We get it, shape tape is good, okay, but can we have something original? I, I don't know. So this concealer actually has 25 shades. It says that it's a high pigment elastic formula. Gives you ultimate full coverage with a totally lightweight feel. Ultra long wear, undetectable finish, which apparently it doesn't crease or settle into fine lines. A natural matte finish with an ultra blendable formula. Okay, that all sounds good to me. Let's get this on my face. <laughs> so I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to make this work. It's supposed to be very full coverage, so I'm just gonna add a few dots. And let's get to blending this out. Whoa. Okay, I see you, L'Oreal. This is going a friggin' long way. You know what, let's just take this over the lid too. <laughs> okay, so it says it's not gonna settle into fine lines or anything, but I just found crow's feet that I didn't know I had. <laughs> I'm kinda devastated, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna go in with a little bit more because I still have like darkness underneath my eyes. I have darkness. Sounds so dramatic. It has pretty much dried down to a matte finish. I know I'm looking a little bit insane because it is so light right now. I don't know about lightweight though because I can definitely feel it underneath my eyes, but the coverage is pretty good. So I'm gonna quickly do the same on the other side. Next I have a brow pencil from MUA. It's the Bram Define, which is a micro eyebrow pencil. I have the shade Mid Brown. I just thought this looks similar to my Maybelline one, which I really like. Oh yay, it has a spoolie, which is great, and it's a twist up brow pencil. So let's try this out. So it's quite good for doing the hair strokes. The product is quite creamy. The color is pretty good for me right now. It's not too warm or anything like that. It's the perfect kind of medium brown, but it is kind of easy to lose control of it simply because it is so malleable. It just kind of moves everywhere. It's not bad, but it's not my favorite eyebrow product. To make sure that it doesn't move or anything like that, I just suggest setting your brows with maybe a brow powder or an eyeshadow of the same shade. It'll just help everything lock in place, you know? I think it's worth the price. Okay, now I'm gonna zoom you all in and do the eyeshadow. So we're gonna be getting into some of these brushes. I really wanna try this brush from Poundland because it's like a little fluffy blender. It actually feels pretty good. It's a synthetic brush. It's cute, it's purple, and it's got little hearts in the handle. But will it work with eyeshadow? We shall see. I'm using the Huda Beauty Mauve Obsessions Mini Palette. Some pretty warm red tones there. So I'm gonna use this the normal way that I would use an eyeshadow palette. I'm gonna go in with this dark, rich red shade at the bottom. I'm gonna try it with this Panlan brush, and we're gonna see what happens. Okay, so a lot of pigment on the brush and a little bit of kick up in the pan. This obviously isn't gonna be like a tutorial because I'm just trying out the product, but let's see how this goes and let's just go in. Whoa, it is really pigmented and this brush is actually okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna take this all the way through the crease. I can't believe that just spread over my lid so pigmented. Like I didn't even need to pack it on. It just kind of spread the color really nicely. Oh my gosh. Like there's no skipping or anything to that. That is so good. I love that color. Oh my God. It's like a rich cranberry 
looks so good. Now I'm gonna take this Spectrum brush, which is the A08, and I'm gonna go in with the red shade that's just above the one that we just used, that's slightly lighter, and I'm gonna buff the edges of the dark color to really blend and buff it out. That blended out super duper nicely. These are really even in pigment, and they're blending out very flawlessly. I really like this palette. I'm gonna take some of that cream white shade, and I'm gonna blend it out just a little bit more and take this right up to the brow. That blend is gorgeous okay and actually i'm really surprised by this pound brush it's actually really good at blending and buffing the color so probably going to continue using this this is really good i do have other ones to try out so we'll see if they're any good the spectrum brush is pretty good it was a little bit big maybe this was more for like a base brush like maybe concealer or something but spectrum brushes are always really good quality fun fact spectrum was actually created by two welsh women so i gotta represent <laughs> blended really easily and picked up a lot of pigment i really love spectrum brushes so so to test out some of the shimmers i'm going to cut the crease using a little bit of my concealer and to do this i'm going to be using one of the poundland brushes that i picked up i'm going to use this one because it's flatter so let's see how well this cuts the crease We have one hair that's just a little bit longer that's kind of doing my head in. <laughs> okay, so this brush was not bad for cutting the crease. The bristles picked up a lot of products, so the concealer went quite far. The edges are pretty smooth, obviously out here, not quite, but it's a pretty good brush for cutting the crease. Is it my favorite? No. Will I reach for it? Maybe. The shape and size is pretty good. Now I'm gonna set the concealer with a shimmer, and I'm gonna go for the lightest, kind of mauve shimmer in the palette. Oh. It's not picking up a lot of product on the brush. Okay, I'm gonna try it with the brush. If not a lot of product comes out, I'm probably gonna have to use my fingers, which I find that with a lot of Huda Beauty eyeshadows. Nothing is coming off on the brush at all. Great. <laughs> so I picked some up on my finger and I'm just gonna pat this over the concealer. God dang it. Why don't I do this over my fingers? Mm. I'm gonna try wetting my brush. Mm -hmm. There's like no lot of shimmer at all. In fact, in the pan, it's kind of gone a little bit dull as well. It's so strange. It feels very creamy in there, but just doesn't go on the lid. Okay, I'm gonna go in with this pink one over here that looks very shimmery. I'm gonna go on the outer part of the lid with that. Get in a little bit of fallout. Your shimmers just aren't working. I don't understand how you can get matte so right and then shimmer so wrong. And I find this repeatedly with Huda Beauty eyeshadows, the shimmers just don't perform that well. They're just not even up to par to drugstore. Look at this, like there's barely any sheen on my lid. Also make my eyelid very textured because they're quite thick in consistency. So anyway, mattes are really good. Don't rate the shimmers at all. Next we have a liner. This is by NYX. It's the Epic Ink Liner. I haven't done liner in a while, so this may go really wrong, but we're gonna try the product anyway. This is supposed to be waterproof and it's just in the shade black. Ooh, it has a super tiny tip that could be good. I'm gonna have to hold my breath to do this, so bear with me one moment. <laughs> Okay, so this is super duper black. I really love the applicator. It's such a fine tip. You can really get in detail and have a really thin line. I felt like I could really control this really well. The one thing that I don't like about this is look at my inner corner. <laughs> it's already bled, but apart from that, I really love this. I was concerned, okay, because I haven't done wind liner in a hot minute, <laughs> but this made it super duper easy. I also have this eye pencil by Kiko. It's the Jelly Jungle Eye Pencil in 04, which is just the black shade and it's a retractable pencil so I'm gonna tight line with this and see how it goes so it lined my waterline really well it was creamy but not too creamy where it was breaking off but I don't know if you can see it kind of transferred I don't know if that was my fault or the pencil's fault because I hate tight lining but it is really black I'm hoping it doesn't transfer any more to my lash line anyway let's move on to the mascara i've got the nyx worth the hype mascara which i really am excited to use see if it's worth the hype <laughs> whoa -hoo. that is a beast of a wand that is like literally bigger than my eye let's see how this works on my lashes it's a very dry formula it feels like air like i'm putting nothing on my eyelashes <laughs> hello are you in there okay the wand is so big i just managed to touch underneath my eyes with it. Uh, personally, I don't really like this. It doesn't really add a lot of thickness to my lashes at all. They're kind of wispy, but 
I just feel like they look non-existent. <laughs> I prefer more thick, clumpy kind of lashes. This just kind of coats my natural lashes and doesn't really add anything more. It's not worth the hype. So I'm gonna do this eye off camera and then we'll zoom you guys out and finish off the rest of the face. So I've done my other eye. What I wanna do now is kind of shape this face a little. I don't know why I took my head out. I completely forgot to set my concealer. It has kind of creased and collected a little bit. I have this powder from Kiko, which is the Radiant Fusion Baked Powder. It's in the shade 01. This is the Spectrum AO2 brush. So I'm just gonna go into the powder. Whoa, <laughs> there's a lot of fallout on that. And I'm just going to go in. Okay, this brush is dense, but it has a little bit of movement to it, which I quite like. I really like the finish of this powder. It's kind of smoothed my under eye, but also made it a little bit radiant. I really like this brush for doing this. Kind of like the perfect size as well. It fits really nicely underneath the eye. Okay, I really like these two actually, they're pretty good. Just gonna set the rest of my face. I'm gonna use the Spectrum A01, which is just a big fluffy brush. This foundation, by the way, I've had it on for maybe about an hour now and it's starting to get kind of shiny already. So I don't think this is gonna be a good one if you've got oily skin like my thumb. Hey, Kiko Powder, really like you. I have this contour palette from Make Revolution. It's in the shade Light Medium. It just looks really good for my skin tone, especially when I'm very fair. I'm gonna use the Spectrum A05 brush. So for contour purposes, I'm gonna go in with this very end shade here, which is like a cool tone brown almost with a gray base So I've just added a bit of the color right on the tip by here. I'm just gonna dab off the excess That went on very lightly blended super easily and actually went quite far for the amount of product that I use shade is also really good for my contour I really like this Yay. Bronzer. I'm gonna try it this shade by here. It's gonna go over the contour. It's actually a quite a nice shade It's not too orangey, but it also is very bronze. The palette is actually a pretty good winner for me. Blend it out so easily. Definitely will be using this more. My earring is literally a hazard today. And now on to highlight. I have this one from Makeup Revolution. It's the Revolution Skin Kiss, which is in Ice Kiss. Hopefully I like this. This is obviously a very gold highlight. In the pan, it actually doesn't look like much. Just gonna swatch it just to see. It's so weird. In the pan, it doesn't feel creamy, but when you actually put it on your skin, it does. We'll see how it looks on the skin. I'm gonna use this Spectrum B08 brush. I'm just gonna gonna swirl it around in this. Not a lot of kick up at all in the pan. Whoa, there was a lot of kick up on the brush though. <laughs> okay, so that is actually quite intense. I'm quite happy with that. And actually, it's not accentuating texture at all. It's going on very creamy. It's not glittery, which is amazing. It is very blinding and very like seamless on the skin. I like this a lot actually. Blush, I've got this BH Cosmetics blush palette. It's got 10 colors in it. We have some pretty nice shades in here. I'm kind of intimidated, but I'm gonna go in with this shade right here, which is more of like a neutral pink. Ooh, it's added like a slight amount of color, which I like. I don't like anything too intense. Really blendable, really buildable. I like that, the pigment was really good. You get a lot of shades in this. Peach Cosmetics. Okay, I need to try some more of your stuff. I just need to finish up my eye makeup real quick. I'm gonna use one of the Poundland brushes again. I'm gonna go in with this brown shade in the center and do my lower lash line. Okay, so this brush worked fine. It was nothing spectacular, but it got the job done. And finally, we have lips. I don't have a lipstick, but I have a lip liner and a lip gloss. Look at that gloss. I cannot wait to get this on. So first I'm gonna try this lip liner which is by NYX and it's the suede matte lip liner in the color Soft Spoken. I'm gonna put this all over my lips. Okay, so that's a nice brown nude with a kind of pink undertone and actually all over the lips it's not even that dry this is a really good lip liner it wasn't too creamy in fact it was like just that perfect consistency these are only like four pounds this is really good next i like it okay on to the glorious gloss so this is by makeup revolution and it's the lip topper in luxurious i mean if this isn't a fenty dupe i don't know what it is let's try this baby out has a normal dough for applicator oh my gosh, that is so pretty. When you rub it into the lips, it kind of disappears. It's not as intense, but it's super duper pretty though. And it feels nice. It's not gloopy at all. Like I think you can see when I'm talking, it's not like stringing or anything nasty. Okay, Makeup Revolution, this is good. Okay, I'm all done. Let's zoom you guys out and discuss my overall thoughts. Overall, everything was pretty good, but I do have some things that are questionable. 
and that I didn't like. So let's just go through the things that I did like first of all. The concealer is really good, it does need setting though, it doesn't set down by itself and it did have a matte finish. Obviously this colour was a little bit light for the current tan situation I'm in but when I'm fair this will be a really good shade. Definitely something that I'm going to reach for and try again. The powder also really good, I really love the finish of this. Like it's made my skin look super duper smooth but also has a slight satin finish to it. It really makes the skin look kind of like natural and just overall really healthy. So I'm definitely going to be using this some more. The bronzer and blush palette, really good, really amazing pigment but also so blendable and buildable. Like these are so good for such an affordable price. I just don't, I just don't get it. What are they putting in this stuff? <laughs> also, who could forget the creamy blinding highlighter? Like, hello. Amazing. Again, Makeup Revolution really have good highlighters. I love the Sophie Does Nails Collaboration Highlight Palette. That is amazing. I loved the NYX eyeliner and it didn't run out on my second eye, which is great. I feel like there's still a lot of liquid in here. It continued to perform. I feel like the tip is slightly more brush than felt. It's more flexible and fluid with your eyelid than what a felt tip would be but I really like that and I find it really easy to use. Also the Kiko eyeliner pencil, I feel like that went on really well in my tight line. Apart from the initial part where I had a little bit of transfer, it hasn't transferred anymore which tells me that it was just my application. <laughs> so hopefully it doesn't throw out the day. I'm gonna have to test that to see if it's long wearing because I always get it all the time without fail. I get transfer and I'm just in the search for an eyeliner pencil that doesn't transfer. And then finally, this duo, oh my gosh. The NYX lip liners, they're just such a good consistency and they feel like they're gonna be really long wearing and they're comfortable on the lips. So I'm gonna be going and picking up some more of these because it's a really good formula. And this just, oh my gosh, I really wanna pick up the other colors because I think they have like four colors of these. But it's just so pretty on the lips and I know it looks a bit intense in here. The actual glitter doesn't really show up on your lips. So that's one thing if you're expecting this to be like this metallic on your lips then you're not gonna get that but it's so comfortable lightweight I can barely feel it on my lips it's not sticky the formula is great on this and it just gives you that plump look I feel like Sebastian <laughs> you got to poker your lips like this and if we're comparing it to the Fenty gloss bomb I think I actually prefer this because gloss bomb is quite sticky and this doesn't feel sticky at all yeah that's the tea on that <laughs> I'm joking, I don't have any tea. I still wear the Fenty Gloss Bomb, it's just my hair gets all in it and it's very annoying. I have a kind of meh category. These are products that I think are okay, but they're not the stars of the show. So we have the Eyebrow Pencil by MUA. I feel like this is okay for the price. It is very creamy, it's a good size pencil and you have a spoolie as well. But the consistency for me was just a little bit too creamy. I'm a little bit mess prone, so I will accidentally bump myself and then find myself having the product everywhere. Personally, I just prefer something that's a little bit stiffer in consistency. <laughs> so funny. Next is the Revolution Primer. All in all, I do like this, but the scent is quite strong and I didn't feel like it made that much of a big difference for me to go back to it, if you know what I mean. It felt nice on the skin, it felt like a gel moisturizer. Then it did add a smoothing element to it as well. But personally, I have quite porous cheeks and I'd need more to fill in those pores. And I didn't feel like it did a tremendous amount of blurring on my skin. I love my Urban Decay self-adjusting primer and that really blurs out and almost puts like a filter on your skin. I was expecting that kind of thing with this. Granted, it's like a third of the price. It didn't really wow me, so again, meh. Also the scent of this. I don't smell the Star Anaise now, but it was just intense at the time. And the final one in the meh category is the Huda Beauty palette. It's just because of those goddamn shimmers. The mattes are really good, really blendable. I don't see any shimmer pretty much on my lid at all. And if you're paying £25 for a palette, then you want it all to work, especially if it's this size. It's tiny. So this is why this is in the meh category, because I like the mattes, but I don't like the shimmers. Mm. Meh. I have two that are kind of in the meh. I don't want to use you again category. One being the L'Oreal foundation, but actually looking at my skin now, I think the powder might have saved it. I think it's warming up to my skin nicely, but I'm still going to stick by what I said because I want my foundation to look good from the get-go. I don't want to have to wait for my foundation to look okay. And also, the shade range is just abysmal. As I said, I'm tanned right now. I know I don't look good okay, please don't comment that. And finally, the NYX mascara. This I just wouldn't use again. I know I wouldn't reach for it because 
I've got cheaper mascaras that do better. It added like a little bit of length but no thickness to them and personally I like thicker voluminous lashes. If you prefer a more natural wispy kind of lash then maybe you'll like this but for myself personally it's not my cup of tea. Also the wand on this was just too freaking big. It's just problematic okay. For clumsy people we can't have stuff like this. Finally, I thought I'd just mention the brushes. I was actually super <laughs> impressed with these Poundland brushes, like what? First of all, they look cute with the like little hearts in there. The blending brush was super good. I've had no shedding and like if I do this, it's not coming apart or anything. There's actually still pigment on this brush. <laughs> it keeps its shape and it's not completely, you know, soft velvety, but it's not abrasive. It's decent. For price you're paying you're paying literally a pound for a brush that is so good but i honestly think i'm going to use these again because they were really good and they were really affordable one thing that i do just have to point out when you go in store there seems to be a little bit of inconsistency like the blended brushes were a little bit of a different shape to each other some of them were more dispersed some of them were a bit more tighter packed so just look through them and find the best one i guess but overall the actual application and the way they work a plus and then finally the spectrum brushes that i use they always are really good quality they're really soft I've got loads of spectrum brushes already. Okay, so that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed me trying some new products and giving you the lowdown on my thoughts. If you want to keep seeing when I try new products, don't forget to hit the little subscribe button down below and hit the little bell button next to it so you get notified of when I upload. If you like this video, then leave it a little like. I always appreciate that and it just lets me know what you guys want on my channel. And yeah, that is it from me. I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are in the world and I hope to see you on the next one. Till then, bye guys. So make sure you follow, so make sure you, f I try to not, uh, a little bit of elf, a little, the one thing that isn't affordable in here is the, I'm gonna sneeze, uh, no, please don't sneeze, itchy nose, ugh. Probably put some lip on. My lips are really dry. Cheers. Earring? Do you mind? Rude? Earring. Stop it. My dog. You gotta stop. Just my patience. Supposed to be full coverage, so I'm not. Oh, oh, oh. Next, I have this eyebrow. Next, I actually have an eyebrow pad. Uh -huh. It just kind of moves. Moves? <laughs> well, that. I just is. I just did. Okay, so that's a pretty brownish pinkish. What am I trying to say? So I really appreciate. Ow. I don't appreciate being hit in the face. <laughs>